Hey everybody, so I've been wanting to make this video for a very, very long time and I figured now was a good time to do it as while I'm recording this. So many of us are in self-isolation, you know, quarantined at home and all this sort of thing. And I know that for a lot of us with various anxiety disorders that it's really a lot, it's kicking off <laughs> for a lot of us. So I thought uh, now's a good time to share with you my tips or hacks, if you like. A lot of people say that they suffer from anxiety when they mean maybe they get stressed or nervous or shy or, you know, mull thoughts over at night. Like that's all very normal. That's all normal human stuff. Everybody experiences that at some point. You're a human being. You're not going to be happy and relaxed all the time. Having anxiety is normal, but having an anxiety disorder can be crippling and ruinous. The kind of thing for which no amount of green tea or meditation or yoga or walks in the forest is going to do jack shit. <laughs> I have found, for example, that during periods of intense anxiety, meditation made it worse. I would try to go for walks, but as soon as I'd step outside, I'd start like panicking and freaking out. Every time I ate something, I'd feel a little bit sick afterwards. That would that would give me a panic attack. Yeah, it can be really fucking bad. And there's no there's no holiday from it. You know, it can it can feel inescapable. You can't take a break from your own brain. Some people they can develop later in life. It might completely take you by surprise. You might be 60 years old before you have your first panic attack. It can happen any time. Personally, I was seemingly born <laughs> with a panic disorder. So I've, I've got a lifetime of experience to draw from to give you hopefully some helpful tips. I've seen advertised that there are herbs that can beat anxiety. It's like, no. If you have just general nervous, you know, maybe you're, you're feeling restless or stressed out or whatever, the people with mild symptoms like that may benefit from things like St. John's wort or valerian or catnip tea or skull cap. But if your anxiety is at the point where it's an actual mental illness, those things aren't going to help you at all. And I know that a lot of us at the moment, especially those with, you know, health or illness anxiety are really having a hard time. I've seen it online, I've seen people struggling and I'm like, I know exactly what you're going through. And one of the worst things is to feel like you're alone in it. You absolutely aren't. Know that you are not alone. If this is you, if you're having symptoms of severe anxiety, you are not alone. It's okay and you will survive. Um, and I hope that these tips or hacks, or whatever that I'm sharing with you today, will be of some use to you. Anxiety and panic attacks are as unique to people as brains are unique. Brains are very complicated, everybody's is unique, so nobody experiences anxiety quite the same way. I haven't met two people for whom it's been exactly the same experience. There are things that pretty much everybody has in common, and those are the sort of things we are going to tackle today. These things I have to share with you today are going to probably seem quite strange. They are designed to kind of hack your subconscious and also, if that makes any sense, you'll see what I mean. You know, how to actually handle a panic attack when you're having one. Like, when, when you totally have a meltdown, when you think you're dying and reality is caving in around you. I've got a couple of tips for just how to survive that. Okay, so like I said, be warned, some of these things are going to seem very weird to you, possibly, but these are some things that I have developed and figured out that are, well, can be very beneficial. So one of the things that happens to pretty much everybody during a panic attack is that your heart rate increases, your heart starts really going for it, sometimes you can feel it beating in your chest, because that's, that's a normal reaction to fear. You know, you get a fright, you're feeling afraid, like your, your heart rate boom, 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 starts going up. So one thing that you can do when you're in just a good normal state of mind is you want to try and get your heart rate up, but try and associate it with a positive feeling. So try bouncing around if you can just skip or just jump up and down do some jumping jacks just like really 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 move your body around until your heart rate starts going up and say positive things to yourself while you do it like literally jump around your living room and saying i feel good i feel fine i am happy i am happy i am happy i am excited i feel good i feel fine everything is okay or just just positive things like that like really especially saying like I'm excited, I'm excited, this is great, this is great, while your heart rate is up. And if you do this repeatedly, the idea is that your brain should start associating having a, a fast heart rate with feeling excited rather than terrified. Also, like when you do start feeling panic coming along and your heart rate goes up, you might want to try and force yourself to feel excited rather than scared. The feelings of being excited and being terrified are physically or physiologically quite similar. So when you do feel panic coming along, you can try forcing yourself to smile. You, it might feel utterly impossible, but you might try. You might want to try forcing yourself to smile or think of something really good. Like just try to force yourself to think of the most 
exciting wonderful thing you've ever done in your life like going to Disneyland think of something that you're looking forward to think of the best day of your life basically try to switch your brain from feeling terrified to feeling excited because your body's going to be doing that thing anyway does it make any sense at all I don't know the brain is flailing around looking for danger so you want to try and attach that sensation to something exciting something positive and good rather than like I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. Like, I know that that's how I feel, and I know that it is pretty common for a lot of people when you have a panic attack to just think, I am dying right now, no one can save me. Prove me wrong, you can't. It's horrific. <laughs> it's awful. Something else to try and, like, hack your subconscious is in your environment, so in your home, your bedroom, your workplace, whatever, wherever it is you spend most of your time, leave messages around for yourself so for example i have a big whiteboard so normally i would write something big on my whiteboard you might want to try leaving post-it notes around or like writing on pieces of paper a4 paper and like big letters with a sharpie and like maybe just stick those around your home that say simple things like i am fine i feel good everything is okay right i found that that was really beneficial with disassociation. Disassociation is a terrifying feeling that when you get seriously, seriously bad anxiety, <laughs> that can happen too, uh, where you feel like you're completely disconnected from your body. And it's really, it's really not simple to try and reconnect your your brain to your body if that, it's so hard to explain if you've never experienced it. If you just leave messages around for yourself, somewhere that you're going to see them, somewhere that you even, if you're not paying attention to it, your eyes are seeing it, it's going into your brain, it's going into your subconscious. Positive of affirmations about feeling fine, feeling good, feeling normal, feeling calm, just whatever works for you. They must always be in the, um, what's the word? Like, not, not in the affirmative. Never write anything negative. Say like, you can't tell your brain not to feel something or not to do something or not to think something. So they have to be positive. Like, for example, don't panic wouldn't work which is, you know, nice advice, but don't panic wouldn't work because all your brain is seeing is the word panic. Uh, you want to say, I feel calm, I am fine, all is well, everything is okay, I am happy, whatever works for you, but they must be positive, simple, affirmative statements like that. So yeah, leaving messages around for yourself. Very helpful. The other thing you should probably do, and you've probably heard this a million times, is to give up caffeine. If you're a caffeine drinker, so if you like coffee or energy drinks, personally I'm all about energy drinks. I went through this period about nine years ago, I think it was, where I just had this um I, I, it was it was so it was so bad it was so bad I just like lost the fucking plot for a while seriously I drank energy drinks all the time just because I'm totally addicted to totally addicted to them I gave them up I gave them up for the first time and after a while I just start to feel a lot better like the anxiety was greatly reduced when you're in such a dire state you want anything that's going to help reduce it so if you do drink caffeine I'm so sorry. Um, even like a lot of tea is not good. Moreover, you shouldn't be drinking lots of caffeine anyway. It's not good for your heart. It's such a bad thing for anxiety is to drink caffeine and stimulants and stuff. If you can give it up, then you probably ought to. <laughs> Another piece of advice I have is don't resist medication if you really need it. I resisted taking medication for a long time, maybe like a decade. When I was a teenager I was put on Prozac and Citalopram and they had such terrible side effects and over time I just I just had to stop taking them and after that I was like I don't want any more pills, I don't want to take any more medication for this, I can just survive it myself. I'm not going to Put a bandage over the wound. No, I'm gonna heal the wound. I'm not just gonna mask the problem, I'm gonna I'm gonna solve it. But you know what? You can't. <laughs> I know for some people, I think, depending on what the nature of your disorder or whatever, but if it's something like what I have where it's just always been there, it's just like this bitch ass part of your brain that you were born with, you can't cure it. You know, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a cure. It just has management. You can just try to deal with it so that your life isn't awful. <laughs> I fully resisted medication for like, 10 years at least and also part of my anxiety was about taking pills like I would freak the fuck out every time I had to take antibiotics or any any kind of pills for anything I was really paranoid this belief of like no therapy I'm going to I'm gonna sort it out from the inside I'm gonna solve it eventually I was like I, I can't I just can't do this went to the doctor and I got some pills prescribed and it changed my life like it's saved me. There are that many different kinds of medications, there's so many different kinds uh, for anxiety and antidepressants and things like that. Oftentimes it can be a case of 
you know, trying a few before you find the one that works for you because everybody's brain is different. None of them come without side effects. I guess it's just finding one that has side effects that you can live with. For a while there, I thought that they'd stopped working. I went through this very, very dark period in Germany, you know. I was still getting anxiety and I started having panic attacks again because the pills stop them from happening. You know, I could feel them coming along and then it would be like something just went shh. So yeah, I thought they weren't working, so I stopped taking them. And then, oh, oh, I remembered why I was taking them to start with. I think it was one of the darkest and worst periods of my whole life. It's like with any other illness, you know, if you've got diabetes, you might need insulin. If you have an infection, you take antibiotics. It's an illness. It needs it needs treated with medicine, and medicine exists for it. And a lot, a lot of the time, it really works. It can really help. It sucks that there's this stigma around pills and medication. Like you so often see people in in movies, like dramatically popping pills into their mouths. It's not bad. It's not dramatic. It it could it can save you. It's medicine, and I don't know where I'd be without mine. A lot of people don't need medication. Like I said, if you've got you know a bit of anxiety, a bit mild anxiety, there's nothing wrong with trying St. John's Wort or. or uh, valerian or something like that but if you've got really really crippling ruinous anxiety or panic disorder if it's ruining your life seriously look into medication you know go to a doctor talk about it see if there's something that might suit you my medication saved my life i can't be without it now i, I don't like having to rely on pills i don't like having to take pills every day of my life but even worse is what my brain is like without them so i'm extremely thankful that they exist i had a therapist a long time ago who was trying to teach me some, oh fuck, I can't, I can't remember the name of the therapy. It's like a really, really common kind of therapy that they do. And she would just say, you know, when a negative thought floats into your head, just don't interact with it. Just watch it pass away like a cloud in the sky. Imagine it's just like a like a leaf for a log in, in a river floating away. Just don't interact with it. Just watch it float away down the river. And I'm like, no, because it's not a negative thought entering my head. It's like a physical sensation. It's like being haunted. It's like this creeping, enveloping horror that just sort of creeps up from behind and takes over your brain, and clouds your perception. It consumes your whole mind for a time. And it is like, it is a physical sensation. Not just the physical sensations of like, maybe feeling like you're gonna puke or your heart going faster or feeling sweaty or shaking. I used to shake a lot. I used to really like vibrate when I was a child. Physical sensation, it's not just a negative thought. It can be brought on by just about nothing at all. Some things will trigger panic attacks. Sometimes they just seem to happen completely on their own. <laughs> it's just such an all-consuming feeling that you, you just get into this total survival mode of like, I don't care if I make a scene. <laughs> I don't care if I start crying or if I fall on the floor here. I don't care what happens. I just want to live. And oftentimes after you've had a panic attack, like like that you can get this feeling of shame like wow it was so embarrassing oh my god and trying to explain that to someone who's never experienced it before like i don't think anyone can really get it i don't think anyone can truly understand it they've never had they've never experienced anything like it before when you are having a panic attack like i said your heart is going really fast so one of the things that i have found the most beneficial during the horror is just to try and get your heart rate down sit down put your head between your knees if you can just like lean Lean forward, put your head down towards your knees, and you might want to hold your breath and try or breathe very slowly because your, your natural thing to want to do is hyperventilate. You want to be like, <sighs> which is of course really bad. I once hyperventilated so much during a very bad panic attack that my, my hands and face went totally numb, which freaked me out even more. To lower your heart rate, so you can do that by holding your breath. which might seem hard to do. <laughs> like I said, it's not your natural instinct, but you need to hold your breath or just breathe very slowly because that will bring your heart rate down. And that really, really helps. If you are experiencing heightened anxiety at the moment, know that you are not alone. Loads of us out there are having a shit of a time too. Even though there's all this like alone together kind of hashtag stuff going on and like you can't help but just feel very alone sometimes. Like there's no one there to help you but there is. You aren't alone. A lot of people are experiencing the same thing you are. You're not going to die. <laughs> to me anxiety is just like having this third arm, this extra limb that just every now and then just punches you in the face. So to reiterate you want to sort of train your subconscious brain to associate an elevated heart rate with 
positive thoughts rather than terror if you can. This will not happen overnight, okay? This is like you're talking about forming new connections in your brain. Uh, that can take a lot of repetition. As often as you can, try that thing like I said, bounce around in your house, you know, move around as much as you can, get your heart rate up and smile and say, I feel good, I feel good, I'm excited, this is great, yay, I'm happy, and you'll feel like a freaking idiot probably doing that, but there we are. <laughs> this is weird therapy. Also, leaving positive messages around for yourself, just saying, I feel fine, I am okay, all is well, or like, I am healthy, or whatever it is that is affecting you, positive messages in places that you will see them where they will sink into your subconscious brain. Also when panic attacks do come to try and slow your heart rate by holding your breath, breathing very slowly, putting your head down towards your lap and forcing yourself to think of something exciting. And also don't resist medication if you really really need it. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything. If you have any other tips you would like to share, I would be very grateful and I'm sure a lot of us would be too. So please go ahead and comment those below if you have anything. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel. That would be really super. If you're watching this during the time of the quarantine, the self-isolation, just remember that there is a light to the end of the tunnel. It might seem like a very, very long, dark, oppressive, crushing tunnel, but there is an end to it. You just have to keep going. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, take care of yourselves, be nice to each other, and I'll see you next time. Bye!